In geometry today, we're going to focus on special parallelograms. So in particular, we're going to be looking at things like rectangles and rhombuses, because those are two special cases from all the different kinds of parallelograms that we can look at. So today we're going to focus a little bit on dealing with the properties that are true for them. So let's take a look at this first set of theorems. In these theorems, the first one says each diagonal of a rhombus bisects two angles of the rhombus. So first of all, if I were looking at this, remember if it's a rhombus, all four of these sides are going to be congruent, as well as the fact that they're going to be parallel. So they're saying, they're starting out saying, you know that this is a rhombus, so you have to know that the diagonal itself is going to bisect the angle up here, so cut it into two equal pieces, and the same thing over here. Also, if you're dealing with a rhombus, so if this one is a rhombus, all four of these sides are equal, and opposite sides are parallel. So if it's a rhombus, then we have to know that the diagonals hit at a perpendicular angle, also, if it is a rectangle, so remember if it's a rectangle, these are going to have to be 90 degree angles in the corners. Opposite sides are going to be congruent and parallel. I'm, I'm going to mark a little bit more on this one than I did in the others, but this one, it tells you that this entire diagonal and this entire diagonal are going to have to be equal. And that's something new. We really haven't talked about anything except that diagonals bisect each other. So rectangles are the case where they actually happen to be equal. Okay, let's take a look at the next set. In this next set it says that you specifically are starting out with things that you know are parallelograms and then you're going to go to the rhombus conversation. So if one diagonal of a parallelogram bisects two angles, then it's a rhombus. That's really like going back and looking at this very first one. Okay? The second one, if diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Well, in this one, this is one where they are perpendicular, so that's a rhombus. The last one says that if the diagonals are congruent, then it's a rectangle, which is exactly what this one says right here. So these three, 6, 9, 6, 10, and 6, 11, are really just versions of 6, 12, 13, and 14. Just ways to use them. So let's look at this actual problem to see if we can get some answers. So this one says that find the given measures of the numbered angles given that M, N, P, Q is a rhombus and that angle N is 120. So first of all, really what they want us to be able to do in this one is they want us to be able to tell what all the numbered angles are. So in this one, I'm going to have to make an answer key over here, and they want us to be able to tell what angle 1, 2, 3, and 4 are. Oops. And remember, if we're talking about what they are, th we're talking about the measurement of these. So I'm going to make my little answer key off to the side here. Then I'm going to fill in this little answer box. And in a problem like this, we're going to start out with just some labeling. First of all, if this is 120, I know eventually this one's going to have to be 120. Because if it's a rhombus, it's a parallelogram. So I know this one's 120. I also know that I'm going to have to have angles that get bisected. So that means that I have to know that 1 and 4 are the same. and that 1 and 2 are the same. So 1 and 2 have to be the same, 3 and 4 do, just from what they told us. Now there's one thing I didn't add here that I think we should talk about. And that's the idea that if all these sides are equal, if I were just for a minute to focus on this top triangle, this top triangle is actually isosceles, 
because two sides are equal. Which means that I'm going to have to kind of go back here. I'm going to have to kind of get rid of this piece for a minute. These angles markings in here because really what's going to happen is that if you know that this angle has a marking of 1, this angle is really going to have 2 as well because if it's an isosceles triangle here, if these two sides are equal, then angle 1 and angle 3 would have to be equal, which means the same thing is true down here. So I actually, when I find angle 1, I'm going to have to be able to go through and know that 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all the same. Now, if that were true, basically in this top triangle, I know that whatever angle 1 is and whatever angle 3 is, if I was to add 120 to it, it would give me 180 degrees. That's something important for us to know. And also, I don't know what angle 1 and 2 are, but I can put X's in here. Just because I don't know what they are, but I know they have to be the same. And then my 120 is 180. So I'm going to go through and solve this. I know when I solve X, that's going to tell me actually the measurement for angles 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I'm going to add 1's here. So 2X plus 120 equals 180. Subtract 120 from both sides. 2x equals 60. And if I divide by 2, I get x equals 30. Now that means that up here, that angle 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all equal to 30. Okay, and that really takes care of our answer box for this one. Let's see if we can do one more example to show you a little bit of how the parallelograms work, or excuse me, how the diagonals work. So in this kind of a picture, if it's a rectangle, that means that I know that this has to be equal to this. So we know that FD and GE are going to have to be equal. So I'm going to have to go through and solve this. But let's read the directions first. It says find the length of FD. So they actually want us to find the length of a side, which means not only am I going to have to find Y, but then I'm also going to have to find FD when I'm done. So if I go to set this up, I know that FD and GE are going to be equal to each other. So 2Y plus 4 is going to have to equal 6y minus 5. So I'm going to subtract 2y. So it's 4 equals 4y minus 5. And then on this one, I'm going to have to add 5. And I can already tell just by looking, I know this is not going to come out evenly. So 9 equals 4y. Divide both sides by 4. So I get y equals 9 over 4, or 2.25. Now quite honestly, I'd probably use the 2.25 because it's going to be much easier to plug in later on. So this is 2.25. Let me just change color here. Now I have to find FD. FD is 2Y plus 4, and I know that Y is 2.25. So if I go to add this together, 2 times 2.25 is 4.5, plus 4 would be 8.5. So that means that FD would have to equal 8.5. Put that in here. Now on these kind of problems it's also important to know that if I had to find GE I go through the idea of plugging it in here but I know in this problem that FD is going to have to equal GE because of the rectangle idea. 
And if that's true and FD is 8.5, I automatically know that G is also 8.5. So I go through the idea of trying to find the answer and plugging it in, or I can use the idea that I know that those diagonals have to be congruent.